I was meant to attend the international launch of the Defender in the UK back in April last year. But we all know what happened, COVID and the world changed forever. So here I am now with the Defender that is hardly a new car, but all the hype is gone. The dust has finally settled and I think I'm ready to head out and discover. I don't think there was a car launched last year that was as eagerly anticipated than the all new Defender. And since then it has won countless awards that has proven that it certainly was worth the wait. But we said goodbye to Defender in 2016. And in the four years since then, they've brought this all new model out, sharing zero technologies or components with that previous generation. I find myself wondering, is there any of that original Defender spirit left? Or is it all just in the name? Well, even the 110 is just a nod to nostalgia as it no longer correlates to the actual wheelbase. The new Defender is longer than 110 inches at just over 3 meters. But it is one bloody hot looking box. Chiseled, modernized, standout detailing thanks to the blacked out spec on our test unit. Some of it, of course, is purely cosmetic, like the faux bonnet tread plate. But this is bush cred, now packaged with some serious street cred. The 110 comes standard as a five-seater. Our test unit obviously fitted with the optional third row and working it literally is child's play. The protective backing on the seats is a great practical touch. Space is impressive at 916 liters behind the second row and other practical options include the fitting of an air compressor and you also do get a 230 volt power socket in the rear which is really handy. The cabin is equally spacious thanks to the increased dimensions. Where the old Defender was all about hardware, this new version is like Silicon Valley. Incredible tech that definitely is going to enhance the capabilities and also modernize the experience for the user. But with electronics and gadgets, there's a lot more that can go wrong. Just saying. So the grip handle is gone, but that's not a bad thing because they did have a habit of pulling out. But have a look at this, they've now integrated it into the dash. This dash layout and design I absolutely love. It looks, it looks incredible. The previous generation Defender owners will tell you what they loved was the simplicity of the layout and the practicality. Now there is nothing simple about this, but if you do look past the screens and the switches, you're gonna see that there's been a lot of thought that's been put into how this whole interface and dash is laid out. There's a lot of practicality involved here. What I love, all the storage space are rubberized. Literally, wherever you look, a rubberized space that you can go and store your stuff. It is clever. I love that a lot. And, I oh know I'm saying love a lot. What I really do love, the fabric that they've used. Not only does it feel good and look good on the seats, on the dash, even here on the steering wheel, but I think it's going to be super durable as well, which is fantastic. And then of course, the rubber mats. That is Defender. Defender, where you get to happily cruise along at 120 kilometers an hour in silence and in incredible comfort. Also knowing that I've got plenty in reserve if I've got to get an overtake done. This application, driving on the road like this, you really start appreciating why this car has won so many Car of the Year and SUV of the Year awards. Because the difference between the new and the old is just literally chalk and cheese. It's unbelievable. 
the letter frame is gone and it's been replaced by the company's new D7 architecture. And what that means is you've now got a super lightweight aluminium monocoque that is the firmest, most rigid that they've ever produced. When you're driving, what that equates to is a Defender that no longer is wallowing along. You're also not having to put in all these steering inputs just to get the big boat sailing in a straight line. Instead, you get to enjoy plane sailing in comfort. Engine-wise, there are three Ingeniums to choose from. Two of them are two-liter turbo plants. You've got the P300 that slurps on petrol, and then you've got the D240 that sips on diesel. Then, of course, the choice of the range-topping P400, which is their three-liter straight six, an engine that's got some mild hybrid assistance as well, which is gonna help move it along and also gonna improve the efficiencies. Not so sure about improving efficiency though, because when you are sitting with just under 300 kilowatts and 550 newton meters, it's quite easy to get uh, 2.2 tons, that is the Defender, shifting along. But that is pretty thirsty business. For me, I think appreciating the application where the Defender is best going to be used, it's got to be the D240 all day long. Supremely capable, nothing's changed in that department. Now it's just loaded full of the latest technology. So everything that you need is on the fly. Standard across the entire Defender lineup is terrain response as well as the air suspension. But in our unit, we've actually got the configurable terrain response too. Uh, that really is for the guy that thinks he is cleverer than the engineers and decides how he wants to set it up. But that was a hell of a tricky little muddy section that we had to climb and transverse through, and I've just left it in auto. So it's figured out what it needs to do, but everything is done on the fly now. So I push up a button, I can choose predetermined settings, whether it's mud and ruts or grass, gravel and snow, you name it, it's all there. I think it's opening up a wider scope of discovery for Defender owners now because it really takes the guesswork out of it. What's also incredible, all the technology, the cameras. I mean, I've been using it flat out. Uh, in tricky conditions like this where I'm crossing over branches and twigs, I can see exactly what the wheels are doing. Or I can use that great clear sight ground view technology of theirs. These are all things that are not just gimmicks. Obviously the big concern for me is that uh, Defender, especially the one we're in, has gone really uptown. We've got these beautiful 19 inch black chrome alloys. Not so great when you're bundu bashing or dragging through twigs and branches and rocks like this. That is what you need to consider. I think the guy that wants to be the serious adventurer in his Defender is gonna go the base model. He's gonna go with the steel wheels. But for the guy that really is wanting to look cool and have some serious credibility around the concrete jungle, this is the kind of spec that he's going to want. Now I'm not even going to try listing all of the models, the trims and the customizable pack options available on the Defender because honestly, I think it's a little ridiculous. So know this, you have two diesels, two petrols, as well as a plug-in hybrid that you can choose from. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right, 
a plug-in hybrid, a defender for the concrete jungle. So the 90 is going to start at just on 1.1 million Rand for the D240S, while uh, it will top out at almost 1.6 million Rand for the P400X. The 110 starts at just on 50,000 Rand more for the D240S, with the plug-in hybrid P400EX topping the range at just on 1.7 million Rand. Now figuring out what comes standard across the trim levels as well as what you get with the various pack options, well that is your homework. I wish you luck. The past few years I've been pretty scathing of Land Rover and their product positioning. I mean, they went and took the Discovery, moved it so far uptown that they actually left a void for a no-nonsense SUV which ended up being the rebirth of the Defender. And now the Defender is such a good SUV pretty much I guess what the Discovery 5 should always have been that the question now is why would you even want to buy a Discovery? So they really have gone and shot themselves in the foot with that. Now for sure the Defender diehards are going to bitch and moan and say this is far too expensive, it's too modern, there's too much tech going on there, but do the math, this is a numbers game and this car is going to introduce a whole new bunch of buyers to the brand. Let's call them the can doers. But because of the extensive model lineup, the level of specification, and the fact that the 90 is still to come this year, I think there's also a defender for the do doers, those people that really are going to get out there and experience the capabilities of this. As it turns out, it's been way easy to defend the defender than the caveman. It was never going to disappoint, was it? But you know what is a little bit sad? Obviously, this appeals to a totally new buyer now, and that buyer is more likely to turn this into a town rover than a land rover.